What's up guys, Econ John here. In this video, we're gonna talk about visualizing the Shapiro-Stiglitz model and shocking that model. Let's go. In this video, we will be introducing a graphical way of visualizing the Shapiro-Stiglitz model and be analyzing the shocks to the model. To do this, we need to consider the fact that a firm has a downward sloping labor demand curve where it produces where its marginal product of labor is equal to the wage, it produces up to that point. And we also have to consider the simplified version of our no shirking condition, which considers employment as a direct input, as discussed in our previous video, as W is equal to E bar, which is the effort exerted, plus L bar times B, which is the total labor force times our job bake breakup rate, all over L bar minus NL, right, which is the difference between the total labor force and the number of workers working, plus rho times E bar all over Q, where Q is our shirking detection rate, where, you know, a firm will go and if they go and see a worker uh, shirking, they're going to go and fire him. And this is the rate by which they go they and find those shirkers. So this is the graphical representation of the Shapiro-Stiglitz model, um, where NL, right, which is the number of firms times uh, the labor force L, and wages is W. So labor supply is perfectly inelastic in W from E bar to L bar. So you have this gray dotted line here, right? If we had perfect monitoring, meaning that the firm is able to go and identify who the shirkers are and they're able to go get rid of them right away. However, since the Shapiro-Stiglitz model considers uh, imperfect monitoring, the effective labor supply is determined by the no shirking condition, right? Which is given by this curve, which is just over here. The difference between the equilibrium between the two cases of perfect monitoring versus imperfect monitoring is denoted by EW and E respectively, where EW is our case of perfect monitoring and E is our case of imperfect monitoring. In this model, there is unemployment when compared to the neoclassical model. However, a firm won't hire more uh, than, than that because if they hire more, the wage is low and workers will shirk then, right? And it won't be effective. Um, so they're only going to demand uh, labor enough labor at point E and not EW, which would be the case of perfect monitoring. So let's shock the model a little bit. If there was an increase in the firm detection rate, this shifts out our no shirking condition. Intuitively, if workers are less likely to shirk since being employed are preferred to being unemployed. This allows the firm to hire more workers and drop wages with little risk of workers shirking. So for an exogenous fall in labor demand, this shifts our firm's labor demand curve to the left and changes the equilibrium from the blue star to the red star. Um, Firms go and hire and pay the wage along the no shirking condition, and such a shock could be due to uh, destruction of capital stock or from a natural disaster. For an increase in labor supply, L bar, right? We're moving from L naught to L1, right? This elongates our no shirking conditions. As new workers enter the market, this drives down our equilibrium wage. This is uh, pretty consistent with the neoclassical model. However, we still have unemployment. So in short, we move from the blue star to the red star, right? Where we go and we drop the wages um, and we increase the employment. So if we, let's say we have an increase in the discount rate of our workers, right? This is through some process of self-discovery or some sort of expectation about the future. Um, workers, are more likely to shirk under these conditions. So this goes and shifts our no shirking condition back. Um, intuitively speaking, workers value now more than they value the future. So they're more likely to go take the risk of shirking, right, at a given wage. So in short, we, we end up going and seeing a decrease in the labor supply, but a increase in the wage demanded. For an increase in job breakup rate, this shifts back our no shirking condition. This is due to the fact that since a worker is likely to lose his job anyway, he is more likely to shirk. 
Therefore, a worker requires a higher wage for the same employment. So again, we see a shift in equilibrium from the blue star to the red star, uh, dropping empl employment at that level and increasing the wage. An increase in productivity for the firm in this model is actually going to shift out the labor demand curve and move equilibrium from the blue star to the red star. Um, this is because that since each worker is paid their marginal product and since this technological shock is going to increase the productivity of each worker, that's going to go and increase the wage that they can go and get paid. So let's talk about a special case where there is no job turnover or when B is equal to zero. Um, it's clear from this diagram that most of our curvature from our no shirking condition depends on whether or not we have B in our equation. Um, if we don't have any B, right, this implies that our unemployed workers are never hired. Uh, this is because, as shown in the previous video, that our job finding rate is dependent on the job breakup rate. And, you know, you can kind of see that from our no shirking condition. And in this case, right, workers don't shirk at all because, you know, there's no other, there's not really any other option because if you lose your job, you lose it for good, right? And it seems like that's a risk not worth taking because again being being employed is strictly to refer to being unemployed and the value of shirking is less than the value of not shirking so that's our whole series on the Shapiro Stiglitz model let me know what you thought take care